when God as man descended unto us to erase the stain of sin and put an end to wrath. The entire world thrills with hope on this night that gives it a savior. My people, kneel down and await your deliverance. For Christ has come, the Redeemer is here. May the ardent light of our faith guide us all to the cradle of the infant. As in ancient times, a brilliant star guided kings from the east. The King of Kings was born in a humble manger. He has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim. Happy Sabbath, Shiloh. It's a beautiful Christmas Sabbath morning, amen? amen? So join us as we sing this beautiful song that says, Oh, come, let us adore him. Thank you, Jesus.
morning and happy Sabbath. Our Lord deserves all the glory. And we're happy to be in the courts of worship this morning. So I say happy Sabbath and Merry Christmas. Welcome to each and every one of you, whether you're here in person or you're joining us online. We say welcome. We're excited that you have chosen to worship with us today. And we know that for many of us, there might be feelings of loss or longing because we have lost a dearly beloved. And then for others, we celebrate because we know that we feel blessed to be here today. But no matter the reason, we celebrate today. May we celebrate as the whole world also celebrates Christmas, which for some might be their first Sabbath. So let us wish each other greetings of the season and show God's love, but not just today, but every day. Welcome, one and all. Let us pray. Mighty God of heaven, as we come before you today, we're just so thankful for another opportunity to be in your courts, to worship you as our Lord and our King. And as we come now, we ask that everything that is done here today may be done decently and in order and that you might be pleased with our worship. We thank you in Jesus' name. recognize the birthday celebrants and anniversaries for this week. On Monday, December 27th, are Carla Carter, Leslie Digsby, and Ite McCombe. On Tuesday, December 28th, is Jeremiah Baez. On Wednesday, December 29th, is Vanelle Joseph. And on Friday, December 31st are Debbie Archer, Samantha Archer, Charmaine Stone, Garvin, and Janati Williams. Happy birthday to our birthday celebrant. Our wedding anniversaries are Vogelet and Luke and James are celebrating their wedding anniversary today. Vanell and John Joseph will celebrate their wedding anniversary Thursday, December 30th, and Debbie and Sebastian Archer will celebrate their wedding anniversary Friday, December 31st. Happy wedding anniversaries. we have a few, just a few reminders. Um, let's start first with one of the simple ones. Um, so we have marked outside uh, handicapped parking spots. We're asking you to be mindful when you're parking, not to use the handicapped spots for those who may need those spots are having to walk from the back of the church. So please, um, park appropriately when you come, even though the numbers are small, there are some that are coming that need those spots, okay? Thank you. And then um, we're still in our COVID environment and with the Omicron um, is also going around, the symptoms are not as severe. So we're asking you to be mindful. So if you've been exposed or um, you think you might have it because it's more like a cough or a cold, we're asking you to please take the necessary precautions to not um, to protect yourself and also others. 
So just safeguard yourself as um, if you're uncertain of your status. A special thanks to the Reason for the Season committee and participants. It was good to see and hear from so many of our Shiloh members who participated in the program on uh, Thursday. Special thanks especially goes out to the archers, uh, Sister Samantha Archer and Janae Archer. And I say the archers because we know that when one member of the family is doing something, the whole family is engaged. So I say special uh, thanks to the Archer family for your vision and for actually um, helping us to pull that entire program together. Special thanks also to our AV team um, who helped us very much, especially with the final production of the program. Uh, very much appreciated. We know that we have the talent here at Shiloh and it just, again, another opportunity for Shiloh to shine. Thanks also to the Shiloh Cares Committee and volunteers for the drive-through dinner that was done on yesterday. Um, many individuals were able to receive dinners, but there are a few dinners left uh, that will be available for individuals after service today. So at the end of service, if you could go to the gym, we will be uh, distributing the final amount of dinners that are left. Thanks again to the Shiloh Cares Committee and to Shiloh for your support in this endeavor. And finally, the elders of Shiloh, the current board of elders, would like to thank each and every one of you and to let you know that it has been an honor and a privilege to serve as an elder for Shiloh for this last term. We know that there are challenges at Shiloh, but we also know that there's lots of love and there's lots of cooperation and there's lots of commitment. So as we go into a new year, whatever your position, whatever your ask has been, we're asking you to continue to serve for such a time as this. Whatever your position might be, again, it doesn't matter if you are going to agree to be a greeter, be the best greeter that you can be. We're not doing it, we're not doing it for the person that asked, asked you. We're doing it in service for the Lord. So the elders would just like to thank you again for the opportunity to be your servant leaders, and we wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Again, saints, my name is Neville Wright. I'm here to entertain you or to bring the call to worship. Will you stand with me, please, this morning? Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. That's good news, unspeakable joy. Great light has birthed faith, overcoming darkness. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Today, as we proclaim his good name, let us keep these words in mind that we found in Psalm, 1, Psalm 9, verse 1. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous words. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So let us praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Everybody sing praise, praise God from who all the blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures.
celebration to God this morning. Please join me in repeating Exodus 28 to 11, which said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. For the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Please be seated. Happy Sabbath. Merry Christmas, church. As I was doing my devotion, as I was doing my devotion yesterday, I came across um, one of the statements in my devotion. And it said, they witnessed, well, they've talked about the uh, shepherds. While they were watching their flocks in the field, they witnessed one angel and then they looked again and they witnessed a multitude of angels giving glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased our hymn of worship today is hymn number 122 hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Let us say it as if we believe it. Let us sing with our voices louder so the angels can hear us. Let us stand, please. Everyone singing. by highest heaven adored. Please 
night the angels sang. The message is, Jesus gives us joy. Our memory verse this week is from Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Have you ever wanted something very, very much? You prayed for it every day? You dreamed about it every night? Then someone surprises you with what you wanted when you least expected? Many, many years ago, some shepherds wanted something very much. They got their wish in a surprising way. The shepherds huddled in the fragrant grass. The sheep rested nearby, pale, rounded shapes in the darkness. The moon was only a sliver in the sky. The stars twinkled and glittered with the special sparkle they have on clear nights. The shepherds murmured in low voices. They were discussing their very favorite topic. It was something they talked about almost every night, the coming of the Messiah. Yes, they were tired from the work of the day, but just thinking about and talking about and praying for the Messiah filled their hearts with longing. The shepherds sat quietly together in the deep silence of the night. An occasional bleat of the sheep broke the stillness. Suddenly, a bright star flared in the sky. It came rocketing towards them. As the light grew larger and brighter, the whole countryside glowed like noontime. The shepherds blinked, frozen with fright. Some jumped to their feet. Others protected their faces with their arms. Before them stood a dazzling person. Could it be an angel? Don't be afraid, a pleasant voice said. I bring you good news of great joy. The joy will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign that will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Immediately, the angel messenger was joined by a great choir of joyous angels. Angels filled the sky, and they were all singing. Glory to God in the highest, they sang, and on earth, peace to all on whom God's favor rests. The shepherds watched the angels and wonder, hardly daring to believe they were real. The bright, happy music swelled and filled the night. Bright colors swirled through the sky and dazzled the shepherds' eyes. The angels' joy filled the shepherds' hearts until they felt as if they would burst. Finally, the music drifted slowly away. The angels flew higher and higher, returning to heaven. The shepherds strained to hear the very last notes of the music as the light faded. Then it was quiet, heart-pounding quiet. Did you see that? One shepherd gasped. They were real, weren't they? Asked another. I've never heard or seen anything like it. Let's go. Go where? To Bethlehem. The angel said the Messiah was born this very day. This very day. One joyous shepherd grabbed his staff and began racing down the hill toward town. All the others followed. That's how it is with God's free gift of grace. It gave the shepherds great joy. It still gives people joy. Jesus gives us joy.
Our deacons will now wait on us for this morning's tithe and offering. Thank you so much for your giving. It is because of your giving that we're able to get much done here at the church. So we just ask that you would continue to faithfully give. You can give online through the online giving app. You can mail in your contribution to PO Box 2045, Smyrna, Georgia 30081. Or you can drop it off at the church during the church business hours. scripture reading comes to us from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. We're going to sing this beautiful song that you guys know so well. And it just reminds us that no matter what happens... God is still present. He's still making things right. He's never stopped doing what he said he will do. His promises remain true and that God restores. So as we prepare our hearts for prayer, sing this song with us.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to our service. For those that are watching online, those that are home, we're going to say happy Sabbath to all. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, dear Jesus, we want to thank you, O oh Lord, for this day. This is a wonderful Sabbath day. We have sunshine. What a blessing. Also, this is the last Sabbath in 2021. Lord, we know 2021 has been a trying year for many of us. There has been so much death, so much pain, so much struggle. But Lord, through all of this, you brought us through. So we just want to say thank you, Father. We are so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us, for staying, keeping us in the land of the living and having mercy upon us. But Lord, all of this, we made it through and it was only by your grace and your mercy that we are still here because you promised in your words that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, no matter how rough the road gets, the more we struggle, the more to help us. Because we made it through just by faith, leaning on your words and holding on to your promises. Because of this, we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we pray for our members, those that have passed away for their families, to continue to put your arms around them and hold them tight, Lord, and let them know that you still love them. I pray especially this morning for Craig McFadden and his family that lost his mother. I also pray for the late sister Reed's daughter, for Carlos Keith family. For Diana, for Diana, Samuel's family. And Lord, there are so many of our members that have passed away. I'm just asking you to keep their family strong. Let them know that you'll always be there for them. And we thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you for the nations of sins. We thank you for forgiving us of all of our troubles, all of our sins and transgressions. Father, as we pray in your house today, we pray that the Holy Spirit <coughs> that your Holy Spirit be that our miss.
such a beautiful song. We just want you guys to join us in praise and worship here as we sing this song that's very simple and um, it's open. And it's a song where, though it's kind of moving and driving, it, it reminds me of marches towards the Father. Saying, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. Come on, sing with us. I love you forever. I love you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, sing the love, yeah. I love you forever. I love you yeah. forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you one more time. I love you forever. I love you forever. Sing with us. I love you Make a petition. Pray to the Father. Lord, watch me, we worship forever, right here. We worship forever, yeah. We worship forever, yeah. we worship forever. It's very simple, Lord. Everything you've been through this year, you got to worship. We worship forever, hey. We worship forever, we worship forever, Lord. Time. We worship forever. Nice. We worship forever. We worship forever. Lord. And we give glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. What? Glory to God. Fire. Help me sing it. Say. your time to worship. Everybody exhort your father. I, I love you forever. I love you forever. Yeah. I love you forever. Lord. Jesus. 
after this. Just worship in your mind and in your heart. Surrender your heart to God right now. He's waiting. He's calling. Right here we lift it up saying, Hallelujah. on high He is exalted My Jesus is exalted on high Last time He is exalted The King is exalted on high Everybody in the congregation sing right here he is exalted, the King is exalted on high. Hallelujah. I want to thank the praise team for lifting up the name of God. Lifting up his name today. I also want to thank the pastor, our pastor, Dr. Harold Thomas III, for giving me this opportunity to be here to, to share the word with you today. I want to thank you all for coming out, those of you who are here. And for those of you who are online, I want to say welcome as well. There's no other better, there's no other place to be but in the house of God today on thy holy Sabbath day. Today's what? December 25th. <laughs> well, the world celebrate today, well, some do as the day that Christ was born. But as uh, Seventh-day Adventists, we do not subscribe to that. We believe, we do not believe that he was born on this day. But what we do believe is that he was born. And that is why we celebrate that he was born regardless of the day, regardless of the month, regardless of the year. We believe, we thank God for sending his son, Jesus Christ. I also want to give a shout out to uh, someone who is always behind the scene who, you know, make this picture and this sound possible. Uh, our brother Roger Hilton yes, who the Bible say you know those who found a good woman found a good thing yes, sir. and he got something good that he will be cherishing for the rest of his life and they will be getting married tomorrow tomorrow and I say amen for that and I pray and hope and trust blessing upon your wedding sir and um, let God be the third person in your marriage, in your marriage. I want you all to do something for me, just to pray in your heart that God may use me 
to deliver his message today. Let us pray, Father, once more. We thank you and we praise you. Hide me behind the cross, Lord, and let your word go forth. Your word. Only your word. Your word only. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. There's a promise that was given. A promise was given to the prophet Isaiah. To us. And it's outlined in Isaiah 9 verse 6. And it says, For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. So see, there we see Isaiah kind of give us a glimpse of how the Messiah will come into this world. And we see that, and if we fast forward a little bit down, we see, and we can read the encounter with the angel Gabriel and Mary in Luke 1, 26 to 38. And I'm just going to read it in your hearing. It says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of who? The son of God, the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Let's jump down to verse 38. Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel Departed. I love to read this because when I read it, I sense the, 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 uh, the excitement in Gabriel's voice. He's coming in and he's saying, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Because Gabriel was happy. He was excited. But Mary, the Bible said Mary was troubled. And I believe the reason why Gabriel was so excited and Mary couldn't see that at that time is because Gabriel got a glimpse of the future. Gabriel got a glimpse of the redemption story. So he was excited about that. And sometimes it works with us as well. We read, even read the Bible, we read the promises of God, but yet still we're down, we're depressed because we don't see the promises of God working in our lives. We don't see it that way. We're troubled like Mary was, but I like verse 38 where Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. Some of us believe. And I must say, welcome, Pastor. Uh, we have Pastor Grant with us here today and his family. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. But also, what I learned from reading this passage is that Mary's, uh, Gabriel said to Mary, this 
child, and I'm going to paraphrase for a second, this child is not an ordinary child. This child will grow to be a king, but this king won't be an ordinary king. Uh, this king kingdom will not come to an end. You see, ordinary king kingdom do come to an end. Ordinary king's kingdom only lasts for a minute, only lasts for a while. But this king, his kingdom will reign forever and ever. And I see where some of us believe that this king was only a prophet. This king was only a teacher, probably the, the most humbled ever walked the earth. Some of us believe that this king was just an ordinary man. Some of us believe that this king is 100% man, which you're right. But you fail to believe that he's also 100% God. We fail to believe that he is 100% God. And it breaks my heart sometimes when... I look within my life and I look within even family members who do not accept this man called Christ Jesus as the son of God. When I look and see some of my friends who refuse to accept that Jesus Christ is God. That he was there in the beginning. And I want to share something with you real quick. Because I want to draw a line from heaven to earth. I want to show you where he was before he even began. So I want to turn to uh, John, I'm going to read John 1, verse 1 to 4. It says, in, in the beginning, yes, Sister Lou, in the beginning was who? Was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. All right? He was with God in the beginning. It says, verse 3, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. That has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of mankind. So we can establish here. And we can see. That he was there in the beginning. Well we see the word. At least we can say. That the word was there in the beginning. And we can also say that the word. Was with God. And we can also establish from this passage. That the word was God. But who is this word? Who is this word? All right, let's, let's go down to verse 14. And let's find out who this word is. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only son. The glory of the who? The one and only son who came from the father. Full of grace and truth. There's no confusion in that. There's no confusion in that. And that's why it breaks my heart so much when even family members can't get it. Can't get the concept of who Jesus Christ really is. And that is why I'm here today to share with you the purpose of Christmas. The purpose of Christmas. I remember... There's a song that I used to sing, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk in water? Did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to set us free? But what I like about that line is that, did you know that your baby boy, did you know the child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know? And I want to share with you today the purpose of Christmas. Why did he come? The purpose of Christmas. And I'm going to ask my daughters to come up and help me um, read some passages. I try to include them in Everything that I do before they grow up and jump off to college, I want to get them from their young so that they can uh, have the foundation, have it there. So I'm going to ask them to come up, come on, uh, grab the mic right there. Because I want to show you, because there's three things I want to make clear today. 
about the purpose of Christmas. And number one is the purpose of Christmas is to bring light into this dark, dark world. Number two, the purpose of Christmas is the forgiveness of sin. The purpose of Christmas is to have eternal life. Whatever day that was, that glorious day, that glorious day, the purpose of Christmas. And we're going to look at our first, our first uh, scripture, which is John 12, verse 46. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. I have come into this world as a light. Christmas came to bring light into this world. I have come into this world as a light. So no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. The second one is John 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12. What does it say? Then, <coughs> then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Matthew 5, verse 16. Let's look at Matthew 5, verse 16. Christmas came to bring light into a dark, dark world. Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men so they can see what? Your good works. When you go to work, let your light shine. When you're in the supermarket, smile. Let your light shine. Let them see Christ in you. Young people, when you go to school, let your light shine. When you have conversation among your friends, let your light shine so that they can see God in you and glorify him. Let's look at the last one in that section. It's Ephesians 5, verse 8. Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Hold your head up. Walk as children of light. He has come to give us light. So let us walk as children of God, as children of light. Christmas came to bring light into this dark, dark world, the purpose of Christmas. The second one is Christmas came for the forgiveness of sin. Let's look at John. Let's look at 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. This is a faithful saying, the worthy of all acceptation, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Man, let's look at the other one, 2 Chronicles, verse 7. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. Christmas came for the forgiveness of sins. Let's look at Romans 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned. And the purpose of Christmas is to come to forgive us of our sins. Let's look at the last one. Christmas came to give eternal life. John 5 verse 11. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life, life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Whoever have the Son have life. If you do not have the Son, you do not have eternal life. Christmas came to give us eternal life. Let's look at the next one, John 3, verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. How clear can it get? 
you reject the son, you reject God. God's wrath will remain on you if you reject the son. If you believe that he's only a prophet, if you believe that he's only a good guy, if you believe that he's just a man, God's wrath will remain on you if you reject the son. Let's look at the last one in that section. Romans 6, verse 23. And you all know this one. Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift that God has given us through his son is eternal life. Christmas came to give eternal life to us. You reject the son, you reject Christ, you reject God. Thank you very much, ladies. They know me and they know that whatever we do as a family, we do it together. And, you know, sometimes they may, <laughs> may look the other way or may say, ah, oh, not again, daddy, not again. But, you know, it's a, it, it's a joy when you have kids and grow them up in the fear of God. I remember, you know, growing up as a child, I can now remember my mom praying on her knees calling out my name so I, I know the, that it will be beneficial to them in the end. And I like the last one that they read. If you, the gift, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. But it didn't stop there. It says, through who? Jesus Christ. Through the Son. And today, are you willing to accept that gift? Are you willing to accept the gift that has been given unto you through the Son? The songwriter said, he came from heaven to earth. Christmas came to shine light into this dark, dark world. From the earth to the cross, my death he paid. Christmas came for the forgiveness of sin. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Christmas came to give us eternal life. And I say amen to that and amen. Because Christmas, we celebrate Christmas. We always hear put Christ back into Christmas. But what does it mean? What's the purpose of Christmas? The purpose of Christmas to bring light to forgive sin, to give us eternal life. And I was preparing this sermon and there was one, I always consult with my wife and with my kids. And they said, if there's one thing that you can do for us, don't make your sermon too long. <laughs> so I want to honor them on Christmas day. I don't, I don't want to make it too long. I just want to get the message to you. The purpose of Christmas. And I hope you understand, you get that concept. And you see where he's coming from. That he was there in the beginning. Even before he was born as a child, he was there. And if you reject him, the Bible says there's only one way. There's only one way. And if you reject Christ... The wrath of God remains on you. I want to ask the praise team to come and help me sing a song, The Savior is Waiting. And I'm asking you, are you willing to accept that gift that he has given unto us today? Are you willing to accept the gift the Son of God, are you willing to accept Him in your life? Because there will be a time when time will be no more. There will be a time 
when you will be standing in front of your maker. There will be a time when he will either say, welcome, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me. I know you not. Will you accept the gift as they sing? The Savior is waiting. God is waiting to answer your heart. Acapella is beautiful. Why don't you let him come in? Today, he's standing at the door and he's knocking. For those of you here, for those of you online, to keep will you, you accept the gift that God has given unto you? Will you accept your the Son? To because it says time after time, time after he's there time, and he's knocking. He is and he's waiting for you to say yes. He's asking you, are you willing to let me in? Are you willing to say yes, Lord, yes? to your way. Are you willing to accept him today? Now is the time. Let today be a landmark in your life. Let today be the day that you said yes to the maker. saying to you today don't let this opportunity miss you if you're here and you have not accept the Lord as your personal Savior if you're here and you're contemplating whether to serve him fully or to continue living the way the world wants you to live I'm saying he's here with his arms open wide and he's knocking and he's saying, why, why won't you let me in? Why won't you let me in? My brothers and sisters, tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day when you should make that decision. And I want to give you the opportunity, if it's your desire to follow Christ, if it's your desire to follow him whether you're here or if you're in line if this is your desire to follow him to put the world behind you to say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I want to follow you from now on I want to live my life according to your will regardless of what my friend says regardless of what my boyfriend say regardless of what my girlfriend says regardless of what the crowd says I'm willing to stand up and follow you for the rest of my life if that is your desire and you want to follow him today I'm gonna to ask you to stand 
because I'm going to pray for you. If you're online, you can go to our website and submit a request. Because it's time to stop playing games. We're going into 2022. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. The Savior is waiting. He's waiting for you. We have lost so many over the past few years. Some will make it. Some won't. I want you to be in that category where he says, Welcome, my good and faithful servant. Welcome, my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Can we stand while we pray? Father, your people have heard your message. The appeal was made. There are hearts that are going back and forth, Lord, wondering, should I take this step or should I just continue living comfortable in sin? But Father, you can intervene. You know the hearts. You know the struggles. Help them make their way straight, Father. Help them so that they may come to that point where they can see the gift. They can see why you come. They can see the purpose of Christmas and accept you in their life. I pray and ask for those who tune in through media that you may search their heart, Lord, and see. Help them to make that decision because there's nothing else on this earth for us to do but to live our lives according to your will according to your way help us so that we may say yes to you let us say yes dear father and help us as we go home and we may see the lights we may see the Christmas trees we may see all the beautiful colors we will remember why you came and we may put you back in Christmas. We may, Father, realize that you came to shine light into this world, to forgive our sins and to give us eternal life. Help us to accept your gift in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. And amen. such a powerful message on this day reminding us the purpose of Christmas as we close uh, there are hymnals in the seat backs in front of you let's grab one we're gonna hem sing hymn number 125 joy to the world the Lord is come let all let earth rejoice joy to the world
again for what our hearts have heard and our minds have embraced as your truth. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made, the ultimate sacrifice, being born and then you died so that we might have a chance of a life that is rich and abundant in your grace, love, and mercy. Be with us now as we leave this place. Help us to celebrate like never before because we know our God lives and reigns and will reign forever. Thank you again for all that you've done and that you will do in our lives. Help us to be willing vessels, willing to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that your work can continue and so that many might be able to come to call you blessed. Thank, us again. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And just a quick reminder, uh, we do have some of the dinners left from yesterday. And if you would like a dinner, we're asking you to just one household representative can come into the gym and we'll be able to uh, pass out those dinners. Meals on wheels. Hallelujah. Thank you again. Merry Christmas and happy Sabbath to each and every one of you.